Hi everyone, I'm Vijayhi and I am a freshman at the University of Texas at Austin and I am a national youth leader on the Jane Goodall Institute Roots and Shoots National Youth Leadership Council. And I'm so excited to be here today to talk to you guys about Roots and Shoots and also do a little activity called Tree of Hope with you guys. So um, I'm really excited, so let's jump into it. So let me just share my slides real quick. All right, so to begin, of course, we're going to be talking about Roots and Shoots, which is kind of the youth division of the Jane Goodall Institute. So Roots and Shoots is a global movement led by young people who turn their passion into action and make real world change in their communities. This is Roots and Shoots in action. So in this image, you can see new Roots and Shoots members getting to know more about the program at a celebration of service. And this is also Roots and Shoots. So in this image, you can see three Roots and Shoots students presenting to Dr. Jane. And this is also Roots and Shoots. So this is a little bit of my work. So in addition to things like organizing uh, recycling initiatives and uh, community cleanups, I recently connected with my passion for writing and I wrote some children's storybooks about um, the three R's, reduce, reuse, recycle, and other conservation topics. So it was a really exciting thing that I've done um, as part of the Roots and Shoots community. So what's the story of Roots and Shoots? So this is Dr. Jane Goodall, and she's really an amazing and inspiring person. So even as a young person, Jane Goodall always loved animals. She was determined to study them in the wild and write books about them. She worked hard, saved up money, and at age 26, thanks to her mentor, Dr. Lewis Lackey, she arrived in Tanzania to study wild chimpanzees. Jane was the first person to discover that chimpanzees are closest living relatives have personalities, compassion, and intelligence, and can make and use tools like humans. And the story behind this is truly amazing. In the summer of 1960, Jane arrived in Gombe, Tanzania with her mother. As a young woman, Jane was not allowed to travel to Tanzania alone. She was required to have a chaperone. After following the chimpanzees and watching them through binoculars from afar, they eventually allowed Jane to come closer. One of the first chimpanzees to allow Jane to observe him was a young male Jane named David Graybeard. In November of 1960, Jane made her famous discovery when she witnessed David Graybeard strip leaves off twigs to place into a termite mound. This is what is now known as termite fishing, evidence of chimpanzee tool use. Before this discovery, scientists considered the making and using of tools to be the defining difference between humans and the other great apes. Jane's discovery opened the door for further insights into our relationship to the rest of the animal kingdom. Noting that there is no hard line separating us from other species. Over time, Jane realized that there were many problems facing chimpanzees, humans, and the natural world. She decided to leave the forest and become an activist. Today, she travels 300 days a year, inspiring others to do good.
It all began on James Goodall's front porch in Tanzania, when a small group of students discussed how they felt powerless thinking about the problems around them. Poverty, pollution, deforestation, violence, animal testing, there were so many things. It felt overwhelming. Jane encouraged the group to use their voices and ideas to address the issues they saw, things that mattered most to them. Since that day, Roots and Shoots has grown, and there are groups in all 50 states and 60 countries around the world, with changemakers of all ages taking on major issues every single day. Now, what's your story? With the support of Roots and Shoots, young people find, create, and implement the world-changing ideas that matter to them and their communities. Roots and Shoots supports the hard work of its members by providing tools like our four-step formula, which we'll be covering shortly, as well as resources and opportunities like our mini grant program, National Youth Leadership Council, Project Planning Guide, and much more. Now, we're going to take a look at the four-step formula that helps Roots and Shoots groups find their next project idea or further develop the project they already want to do. The Roots and Shoots four-step formula helps develop your skills and Roots and Shoots compassionate traits as you turn your ideas into world-changing projects. Now, the first step is to get engaged. Think about what are you passionate about? Get inspired by Roots and Shoots projects, themes you care about, connecting with other change makers, and so much more. The good news is that you all have already done this first step. By watching this today and learning about this program, you have all begun the process of getting engaged with the opportunities and resources available to you. If you want to learn even more about the Roots and Shoots program and how to implement a project, our free online course is a great resource. You can also take the Roots and Shoots quiz. You can get inspired and find out how to best plug into the Roots and Shoots program. And this quiz is on our homepage at rootsandshoots.org. Now, the second step is community mapping. Use the same strategy as Jane Goodall Institute scientists to explore your local community through mapping human, other animal, and environmental challenges and resources. Let's look at an example of how one group used this model to create successful Roots and Shoots projects. The Arroyo High School Roots and Shoots group already knew that they wanted to plant a garden on some unused land at their school they decided to use community mapping to get to know their area better, even though they had already chosen a project. During the community mapping exercise, the students realized that there was actually a homeless shelter just blocks away from their campus. They decided to build on their idea of a garden by partnering with the shelter so that none of the food they grew would go to waste they now have been providing the fresh food to the shelter for three years. The third step is to take action. Now that you have some ideas for possible projects, it's time to plan and act. You've, once you have mapped your community and found your project, this is the step to take. 
this is the time to implement the project or campaign you have designed. And Roots and Shoots can help by providing a $200 mini grant for your project expenses. This step is all about you making a difference in your community. Step four is to celebrate all of the successes of your project and reflect on the process you've just gone through. You did it and you wanna make sure to celebrate your efforts by measuring your impact. An important part of step four is sharing what you have learned and what you have achieved with your community. You can do this on many online platforms. You can also register your project by signing up at rootsandshoots.org slash register. Do you want to get started right away? You can also start with a one-click action. You can take action on a range of issues today at rootsandshoots.org slash actions. Now that you've learned about Jane, the Jane Goodall Institute, and Roots and Shoots, it's time for you to take over and take action. You're now equipped with the tools you need and are ready to build your own project to make a difference in your community, and Roots and Shoots is here to help. Remember, every day, you have the power to be bold, be kind, and do good for people, other animals, and the environment we all share. Now, that was a little bit about Roots and Shoots. Now we're going to be moving on to our activity, which is called the Tree of Hope. So this activity is all about visualizing the support structure that holds up your hopes and dreams. So a little overview of what this activity encompasses. In this activity, you will draw a tree that will illustrate the root structure that supports you, the important people, things, and experiences that give you a foundation in life. And the shoots or limbs that represent the hopes and dreams you are branching out toward in your life. Start imagining your tree now and keep it in your mind as we keep going. Now for this activity, you're gonna wanna make sure you have some paper, a pen or a pencil, and if you want, some colored pencils, some markers, or some crayons. All right, so let's get started. The first step is we need to talk about what's in a name. Where does the name Roots and Shoots come from? So here's a little quote from Dr. Jane Goodall. Roots creep underground to make a firm foundation. Shoots seem new and small, but to reach the light, they can break through brick walls. Now we're gonna watch a little video of Dr. Jane explaining the Roots and Shoots name origin. So here's that. The reason that Roots and Shoots has its name is symbolic. So uh, I always ask people to imagine their favorite big tree and then to think about how that tree began. It began its life as a little seed. So I think of an English oak, an acorn. And when that acorn began to grow, little white roots appear and a little tiny shoot, and you can pick it up, and it seems so tiny, so frail, so weak, and yet there is a magic and a, a life force in that seed, so strong, so powerful, that those little roots to reach the water can break through rocks and eventually knock them aside. And that little shoot to reach the sunlight can work its way through cracks in a brick wall and eventually knock it down. So we see the rocks and the walls as all the problems we humans have inflicted on poor old planet Earth, environmental and social. And Roots and Shoots is about hope, 
hundreds and thousands of young people around the world can break through and can make this a better world. All right, now the next step is we're going to be talking about Dr. Jane and her tree of hope. So we've already learned about Dr. Jane and we've learned about her dreams, uh, her accomplishments, her discoveries, and what she does now. So this is just a little recap of all of that. And now let's take a look at Dr. Jane's tree of hope. So this is Dr. Jane's tree of hope. So let's look at this little description here. Dr. Jane chose to draw a special beech tree from her childhood home in England. Notice how she labeled the roots with her support systems and the shoots with her hopes and interests. As you look at her tree, think about your own tree, a type of tree that has special meaning to you and how you would label your own tree. Are there any parts of Dr. Jane's tree that especially speak to you? What parts of your tree might differ from Dr. Jane's? So if we take a look at Dr. Jane's tree, we can see that some of her roots are books, history, family, music, and then some of her shoots are share, peace, respect for life, and there are some a few others for both roots and shoots, but kind of think about how Dr. Jane Street would relate to your own, your own hopes and interests and your own support systems. And that's actually our activity for today. So let's move forward. So now we're going to be planting our own trees of hope. So the first step is going to be choosing what kind of tree we'll draw and describing it on our piece of paper. So to help you decide on a tree that best fits you, think about what trees have special meaning to you. Maybe what climate your tree is from, and if it's evergreen, fruit bearing, or seasonal. So to kind of help you with that, I'm gonna give you my answer to this question. So I would choose a mango tree because I love mangoes. They're my favorite fruit. And mango trees are indigenous to India, which means that they're from India and I'm from India too. So that's a little example of kind of the thought process you wanna use when you're picking your tree. And so now to pick your tree, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of time by using this little bean sprout as a timer. So this is a little time lapse of a bean sprouting, kind of relating to uh, what Dr. Jane said about the power of you know roots and growing. So yeah, you're gonna have a little under three minutes to pick your tree. All right, so let's begin.
So now that you've got what kind of tree you're going to draw, we're going to move on to the next step. And that is to make a list of your roots. Your roots come from the things that support or interest you. So consider the people or programs that support and inspire you, the sources you learn from, and where you go to find comfort and guidance. So once again, I'll show you my list of roots as an example. So my roots would be my mom, my dad, my little brother, my grandparents, my teachers, the Roots and Shoots NYLC, my friends, and my university. So these are all things that support me, that interest me, and they're all people or programs that I, I gain inspiration from, I learn from and where I find comfort and guidance. So once again, for you to make your list of roots, uh, we're gonna put on the same um, kind of growth timer. And yeah, you're gonna be able to make your list of roots on your piece of paper. So let's begin. All right, now that you've had a little bit of time to make your list of roots, we're going to move on to the next step, which is going to be making a list of your shoots. So your shoots are the things that you're passionate about or you want to explore more. So to help you brainstorm this list, 
Consider what you have been or are currently passionate about, what dreams you have for the future, and who shares those dreams. And of course, once again, I'm gonna share my example to help you generate yours. So my shoots are environmentalism, helping others and volunteering, girls in STEM, computer science, and business. So these are all things that I'm really passionate about or want to learn more about. So of course, environmentalism, volunteering, and encouraging more girls to uh, you know, learn about STEM. These are things I'm really passionate about. And computer science and business are my majors in college, and I'm really interested in learning more about them. So once again, um, I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of time to make your list of shoots on your piece of paper. And we're gonna have the same little beat timer. So once again, let's begin. All right, now that you've had a little bit of time to make your list of shoots, let's move on to the next step, which is going to be drawing and labeling your tree. So you're gonna be putting all of your reflections together as you create a visual of your tree, showing off all those things that matter most to you. So first, we're gonna look at a few examples. So of course, there's Dr. Jane's Tree of Hope. And as you can see, she's written her shoots on the shoots of the tree, and she's written her roots on the roots of the tree. And then I'm gonna show you one more example, which is going to be my own example. So I've got my mango tree, and on the roots, I've got all of the things that I listed um, as my roots. And then on the shoots, I've got all the things that I listed as shoots. So now, since this might take a little bit longer, I'm actually gonna give you guys two sets of timers. 
So we're going to have the bean timer and then we're going to have a little spinach timer. So take some time, you know, grab your piece of paper, um, if you grab a pen, um, if you want to add some color, um, feel free to use some of that. And just draw your and label your tree with your roots and your shoots. All right, and you may begin. Don't worry, you guys still have more time. I'm going to start the second timer now. All right, so let's begin.
right. Um, now that you've had the time to draw and label your tree, let's see what the next step is. Let's celebrate. Now that you've made this amazing tree of hope that really represents all the important things in your life and all of the systems that uphold you and all of the dreams and aspirations that you have, we need to celebrate. So give yourself a little pat on the back, a little round of applause for really making, really making this amazing connection with yourself and re realizing all the different people and different kind areas of things you might not have thought of before that really play into who you are and who you want to become. Now, before we close out for today, um, we want to just remind you that if you would like to, you're absolutely encouraged to share your tree of hope with all of us at Roots and Shoots. And to do so, you can just share your work on social media and tag at Roots and Shoots for a chance to even be featured. So, of course, this is not um, mandatory, but if you would like to, feel free. So you can tag at Roots and Shoots. All right. And now, before we close out, I'd love to kind of show you guys this really beautiful poem that's narrated by Dr. Jane that kind of comments on, you know, the times that we're in right now. Um, it's really beautiful and really moving. So I just love to kind of close out our amazing session today with this poem. So let's, let's do that. Oh, we got mad. Sorry about that, guys. Ah. Well, unfortunately, sometimes we get ads, but here's our poem. It starts as a whisper, a word on the air. It can't quite be heard, but you know that it's there. As gentle as sunlight, as tenacious as hail, in its root to the heart, it could not but prevail. And the people looked up from their day-to-day -day tasks, their day-to-day -day jobs, and their day-to-day -day masks. They heard, or they felt, where the whisper could lead, and they looked with eyes wide at what that might mean. And once they could see it, they hadn't a chance to resist the sweet song of the deep spell it cast. But the feeling it brought them at first glance was pain as they lifted their eyes on the land they had claimed, since they saw at last, as if raised from a dream, they were almost alone in the land and the sea. But the trees had almost gone, and the bees had almost gone, and the creatures in their shells by the seas had almost gone, and the people felt sad as they saw their new earth, but they knew this was it, one wild chance for rebirth. Breaking new ground, seeds rolling down, smell of the earth on your hands and your brow. No time to sorrow. We're building tomorrow. The sound of things growing now keeps us around. As the wildness grows and the deep wood grows and the sense of the future's come to meet you grows, there's no chance we can rest. We must do our best. This moment can lead us back home. That's our test. Hearts as a whisper, a word on the air. It can't quite be heard, but you know that it's there. It then spoke like thunder until we all moved, and we could, and we did, and it's done. She's renewed. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed that. It was 
um, really beautiful and kind of shows that even though things may look bleak, we always need to keep hope and keep moving forward. And that's what Roots and Shoots is all about. So if you'd like to um, stay in touch with us here at Roots and Shoots, um, be sure to follow us. We're at Roots and Shoots. And for the Jane Goodall Institute, it's at Jane Goodall, I-N-S-T. And you can also visit our website, rootsandshoots.org. And that's all for today's session. Um, I had an amazing time um, getting to interact with all you guys virtually, and I hope you had an amazing time as well. And that's it. Um, thank you. Take care um, and be safe. Um, yeah. Thank you. Have a good day.